Well, good morning, friends. It is Crystal here from Homemaking on the Homestead, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am going to be talking about dryer balls, what they do for your laundry, how to make them, and most importantly, what I learned the hard way, how not to make them. So I started using wool dryer balls about four years ago. Um, I had heard a lot about them and decided, you know, I want to give those a try. And I also decided I would make my own. And that was a great project to do. I thought it would be kind of fun. And what I found out is wool dryer balls are super easy to make yourself. And now you might be wondering, well, what do they actually do for your laundry? Well, the main reason, I think, and it was my main reason as well, that people use them is to prevent static cling. And they do, they will do that. They will help prevent static cling. Do they work as good as like a dryer sheet? No, they don't. Um, you know, you have to take it for what it is and realize, hey, you know, once you make the, the dryer balls, uh, you don't have an ongoing expense. The dryer sheets uh, have chemicals and things like that in them, so they're healthier for your clothes, for your body. And so there are good benefits, even though you don't get the amazing cling-free laundry. I've also discovered, too, that if I have things that, you know, a piece of clothing and something's really stuck to it, oftentimes I'll just, you know, snap it a couple times and everything falls off. So I really don't find that I have a big issue with that. But static cling isn't the only reason that people will use these dryer balls. The other thing that they will do is they will actually shorten the amount of time your clothes need to dry. And when I started, I had a dryer that was would sense the moisture in a load of clothes. So I pretty much knew how long it took to say load a, a dry a load of towels. And what I found is that yes, the dryer balls reduced that amount of time by I would say close to 10 minutes. So that was that was pretty good. So you know you can save a little bit of money that way too. The other thing that the wool dryer balls will do is they will soften your clothes as they're beating around on your clothes as they're in the dryer. Uh, they will have a softening effect on your clothes. So that is very nice. Towels come out nice and soft. Your clothing comes out nice and soft. I should also mention that you need to have, in a normal dryer, you need to have at least six, sometimes eight, if you have, if you wash really large loads uh, of these dryer balls in the laundry to have all the desired effects from them. Currently, I have a very small dryer, so I find three has done the job very nicely. If you are somebody that likes to have a little scent on your laundry, then you can also put like two or three drops of essential oil on the dryer ball, but make sure that you give it at least uh, 15 minutes, maybe a half hour or so to absorb into the dryer ball before you do the laundry. Um, because essential oils are an oil, they are flammable and your dryer is hot, so you don't want to have anything bursting while you're in there. It's highly unlikely that that would happen, but you never know, so be just take caution. Uh, I'm not a person that likes my laundry to have any kind of a scent. I'm more of a I just like nat the natural clean smell of laundry, so I don't do anything like that. But if you do need to, that's a great way to do it. If you feel like your dryer balls are not um, cutting down your dryer time anymore uh, like they used to or you notice any changes, then all you have to do is take a spray bottle and spray them with water and toss them into your machine. That just kind of, you know plumps them up again and brings them back to life. You can also wash them and then throw them in the dryer to get the same effect. Wool dryer balls are supposed to last about four years or 1,000 loads of laundry. Uh, you can tell when they need to, to uh, be replaced because they start looking a little scraggly like this one does. They also start collecting lint and that kind of is your signal that, okay, maybe I need to replace them. So my plan was to replace my dryer balls. And so I was going to bring you guys along on the process, which I am going to do. Uh, but in choosing my yarn, I made a big mistake. And when I realized that after the fact, I was like, oh, I got to start this all over again. And then I decided, you know what, this is a great warning to you guys too. And a great lesson that I learned the hard way so that you won't have to. So let's get into the process. I purchased my yarn on Amazon. I liked the yarn I purchased. Uh, it was a, a very nice colors. However, um, I, 
I can't recommend this yarn which I will tell you about in just a minute. So what I used in the past was a yarn called Knit Picks that I also got from Amazon. Now anybody can do this. You don't have to have any special skills whatsoever. You just begin by rolling your yarn into a ball. Now I had a scale so I was able to weigh my my uh, yarn balls and found that they weighed about 50 grams. Uh, I had bought the yarn that I bought was 100 grams so out of each of those I was able to roll two balls. Now the quick knit or the knit picks uh, those were absolutely the perfect size. One skein made one yarn ball. I'm going to say it's it's just under two ounces probably more like one and three fourths ounces of yarn if you do ounces grams uh, that you will need for each one. So you could certainly go into like my crafts or any place that sells yarn and buy a great big skein of uh, wool yarn and know that it's going to take about 50 grams if you weigh it, uh, one and three fourths ounce if you weigh it that way, uh, and that will give you a approximately the right size. Once you have the ball to the desired size, you just simply, I grabbed a crochet hook and kind of stuck it through the ball of yarn and pulled the end piece into the center so the whole ball does not unravel. And I continued with the yarn that I had until I had eight balls of yarn. <laughs> next step is to get a an old pair of pantyhose. Now these can have runs in them, it really doesn't matter. The pair that I am using for this project uh, was the other leg that I had saved after I had made the, the last batch. You're going to cut the leg off of the pantyhose, then one at a time you're going to push those balls of yarn into the pantyhose until you have it all filled up. Then you tie a knot at the top. Now at this point you are going to grab some other yarn. It doesn't have to be wool. It could be any type of yarn. This is leftover from the baby blanket that I made. And you are going to tie a knot in between each dryer ball because as they go through their felting process, which is what does happen, uh, they you don't want them sticking together. So you're going to tie that knot in between each ball of yarn. Now you're going to take them over to your washing machine and you are going to wash them in a very hot load of laundry and you don't have to wash them by themselves. You can be doing your towels or anything else that you might need or use hot water for. Once they have washed you are now going to throw them into the dryer and a very hot. Put your dryer on the hottest setting that you have. Now oftentimes you will need to do this process more than once. Uh, I believe last time I made them I did it like two times, maybe three times, I, somewhere in there. But you'll know because your end product needs to look like a completely felted dryer ball. So now what you would be expecting to see in this video is my finished dryer balls as we just walked through the whole process. So imagine my disappointment and shock when what I pulled out was a ball of wool yarn not a dryer ball. And I was like, what happened? So I went back to the label on my yarn to see what did I miss here? Is, is there some other type of fibers in there that are preventing this? And what I found was that I had accidentally bought Superwash 100% wool yarn. So this is my big warning to you guys. Don't buy Superwash yarn. Superwash yarn means that it has already been washed, it's already been treated so that whatever you knit or crochet with that, when you throw it in the washer and dryer, it won't shrink and it won't felt. That is like, I just couldn't believe that I had done it. Uh, that's sometimes the problem when you shop online is that you just don't pay attention to these little details. I was looking at the colors, I was looking at the size, I was thinking, yes, this would be perfect. And it was not. So for me right now, I'm back to point zero. <laughs> I have to buy myself some new yarn and do the process all over. And you know, in the meantime, this will go into my yarn stash and this winter my uh, grandkids will get some mittens or some hats or something made with the yarn. So, you know, I'll use it, but for the purpose that I wanted, it was very disappointing. Uh, I even thought of scrubbing the whole video and not bothering to do this, but I thought, no, because I'm going to let you guys know things like this do happen, and here is the solution for it. 
and let it be a warning to you so nobody else does this. After I made my first batch, I was so happy with them and so happy with the way that they worked, I decided to make them for Christmas gifts for several of my kids. It made great Christmas gifts. Uh, mostly I gave it to my daughters and they all really appreciated them and have enjoyed using them. The year that I made these and gave them away as Christmas gifts, I purchased on Amazon these really cute little natural looking uh, cloth bags that I was able to put all the dryer balls into and with a little printed instructions on how to use them and that was how I presented the gift and like I said it was very well received by my family and um, this year I think I'm just gonna once I get some more yarn I'm just gonna make a bunch of them because I have friends and I have other people that I think these would make great gifts I know that you can purchase wool dryer balls I don't know how well they work I had a friend that had purchased some and she was very disappointed she said they did not work at all and so and they're a lot less expensive so I don't know you know what it I have no idea I, I couldn't find any information when I went to look and see if anybody else had had similar problems with theirs and I, so all I know is that when I make them myself, they have worked great. All right, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some a good inspiration out of this, maybe a possible Christmas gift idea, who knows, and uh, that you give uh, this a try yourself. If you do make them and uh, enjoy them or whatever, if you try this project out, come back and let me know because I would really be uh, interested to see if anybody else makes them and what you think of them too. That is all for today's video. And I will see you all on my next video. Bye-bye.